live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. No matter how perfect we might think we are, at the end of the day, we're all human. And as humans, we're going to make mistakes and forget things from time to time. Maybe you're out grocery shopping, and you need to buy some cheese so you can make a homemade pizza tonight. And by the time you get in your car, drive back, and get back to your house, you realize that you forgot to buy the cheese. Maybe you're going to a friend's house, and you're bringing cookies or something. So you get to her house, and you realize that you forgot the cookies. The point is that everyone forgets things, and that is going to happen. But there are some mistakes that are bigger than others. Forgetting to bring your lucky hat to the game is different than forgetting to bring your tickets to the game. Assuming you're going on an international flight, forgetting to bring some food for the airport is different than forgetting to bring your passport. And forgetting to rank a team, thereby potentially costing the major bowl opportunities, recruiting opportunities, and millions of dollars in the process? Oh boy, that is not good. Well, the team you've been watching this whole time is Florida State. And in 1988, that's exactly what happened, when one week, they mysteriously dropped in the rankings, which had the potential to be absolutely deadly. And the reason why they dropped in the rankings? It wasn't because they lost the game, or because they played poorly, or because someone got hurt, or because another team ranked below them just played that much better and deserved to be ranked higher. It was because one man, quite simply, forgot to rank them. He just left them off his ballot by complete accident. And to say that there was an uproar over this would be a massive understatement. Because it was so controversial that Florida State demanded a recount, which would be the last time ever that a major vote in Florida got recounted. This is the story behind the 1988 Florida State Seminoles, and one of the most controversial AP poll errors and omissions of all time. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand just how well Florida State was playing which will further emphasize just how ridiculous this entire situation was. Entering the 1988 season, the expectations were super high for the Seminoles, led by the legendary head coach Bobby Bowden. Under Bowden, the Seminoles had a winning record every year since 1977, and had made and avoided losing a bowl game in the last six seasons. And in 1987, they were coming off of their best season in program history. They went 11-1, won the Fiesta Bowl over Nebraska, and finished the season as the number two ranked team in the country. Not only was the 11 wins a school record, and not only was their winning percentage of 92% a school record, but their number two ranking was a school record for their highest finish ever in the AP poll. Because of this, the Seminoles were starting off the 1988 season as the number one ranked team in the nation. They were the preseason number one, and the weight of the world was on their shoulders as the favorites to win it all and win their first title in school history. While it didn't quite work out that way through the first half of the season, they were undoubtedly one of the best teams in the nation. No, their 31-0 shutout loss to Miami in their first game did not help matters, as they fell all the way to number 10 after that. But thanks to some great offensive production, and a dynamic defense led by an electric secondary featuring Leroy Butler and Deion Sanders, two eventual Pro Football Hall of Famers, they climbed their way back and began living up to those lofty expectations. In the six games following their opening day loss, they went on a six-game winning streak, and were sitting pretty with a 6-1 record, as five of those six wins came by three or more possessions. And a lot of these wins were against quality opponents. They went on the road to Clemson, the number three ranked team in the country, on a wet day in front of 85,000 people in a hostile environment, and beat the Tigers 24-21 on a walk-off field goal. They played Michigan State, a team that finished the 1988 season with a winning record, a team that won the Big Ten the year before, and won the Rose Bowl with a 9-2-1 record, and a team that finished last season ranked 8th in the AP poll. And they won that game convincingly, winning it 30-7. They played Southern Miss, a team that went 10-2 in 1988, won the Independence Bowl, and didn't lose a single game to an opponent that season, ranked outside of the top 10. And they won 49-13 in a bloodbath. Yes, there were some cupcakes in there, as is to be expected. But they played some quality teams, and they took care of them. At the end of the day, if you told a Florida State fan that after seven games, they would be 6-1, considering the fact that two of those games were road games against teams ranked inside the top six of the AP poll, I'm sure they would have taken that. And the AP voters were showing them some love, 
as the Seminoles never dipped outside of the top 10, slowly climbing their way back to a title hunt. They jumped up to 9th after their win against Clemson. They jumped up to 6th after their convincing win over Michigan State. And after two straight wins against Tulane and Georgia Southern, part of a six-game streak where the Seminoles outscore their opponents 224 to 100, they jump back up to 5th place. Again, FSU was one of the best teams in the nation on both sides of the ball, as they finished the season with the 5th highest scoring offense in the country and the 9th best defense in the country. And after beating East Carolina 45-21 on October 15th, in a game where Florida State never trailed, where they forced the Pirates to fumble the ball four times, and where they had a dominant passing defense that allowed East Carolina to go just 3-14, for 14, completing a mere 21.4% of their passes, you would think that Florida State would, at the very least, stay put. They're not moving up. The teams ranked 2 through 4 all won, and the team ranked at number 1 was Miami, and we'll talk about them in a bit. But they're not moving down either, especially since West Virginia was ranked number 6, and they didn't play that week. So imagine the surprise, the shock, and the outrage when the AP poll was released, and it showed that Florida State, somehow, dropped two spots, and was now ranked at number 7, having been overtaken by both Nebraska and an idle West Virginia. Wayne Hogan, the sports information director at Florida State, was livid about this, saying on the rankings drop, This is unbelievable. We've won six straight ball games. West Virginia moves in front of us, and they didn't play. And this was big, because when it comes to rankings, usually, teams stay in the spot that they're in until they lose a game. So voters would be more likely to put Florida State at number 7 instead of number 5 going forward because of their new spot. And this was big because when it came to bowl games, Florida State was independent, so there was no conference tie-in. This meant that because of this slip-up, if everyone else in front of FSU won out, then there was a chance that FSU could be snubbed out of a major bowl game when you consider how the tie-ins worked. That raises the question, why did they slip? How could a team that's won six straight games enter the season as the preseason favorite to win it all, and has played exceptional football as of late, blowing out most of their opponents and beating some quality teams in the process, drop all the way to number seven. Turns out, it wasn't a job by multiple voters who had FSU a bit lower. It was one voter, that's all it took, that completely skewed the average. Because while just about every voter had Florida State somewhere in that three to six range, there was one voter who didn't even have them inside the top 20. He had the Seminoles, a 6-1 team that was red hot as an unranked team. And the reasoning for this? There's no grand conspiracy. The voter just simply forgot to put them in his poll. That's right, Florida State slipped two spots in the rankings because a voter simply forgot to check his ballot and forgot that he didn't include Florida State on it. AP Sports editor Daryl Christian said on the fiasco, it was an oversight on the part of the voter, and an oversight on our part for not double-checking. We try to ensure it's as honest, of course, and as accurate as such an unscientific survey can be. And initially, the voter that forgot to include Florida State was anonymous and was unidentified. However, a week later, the voter came out and owned the mistake. The voter who did this was a guy named Ronnie Christ of the Harrisburg Patriot, a publication out in Pennsylvania. It wasn't like this guy was a random journalist who had no idea what he was doing. From all accounts, Christ was very good at his job, as he served as a sports writer covering Penn State football for the publication for 34 years. And from all accounts, Christ was a great guy who took his job seriously. He passed away in 2018 at the age of 82 from Parkinson's. And all the obituaries and memories on sports forums that people had of Christ were extremely positive. So that raises the obvious question. What happened here? How did Christ, an extremely well-respected writer around the Penn State community, just forget to include Florida State on his ballot? Well, that's where the explanation gets a bit confusing. I told you we were going to talk about Miami again. Miami was the lone team ranked ahead of Florida State to lose that week. You may have heard of the game that Miami lost, because their loss, and their first regular season loss in more than three years since they lost to Florida on September 7th, 1985, came in a 31-30 defeat to number 4 ranked Notre Dame in one of the greatest college football games of all time. This was the Catholics vs. Convicts game, where Miami, with 45 seconds left, scored a touchdown and opted to go for two instead of the tie which they failed to get. It was an exceptional game, and was a game that still lives on more than three decades later. 
many people will argue to this day that it was the greatest regular season game in college football history. And it's not hard to see why, considering the stakes and the rivalry between the two teams. Why do I bring Miami up? Because obviously, after this loss, as great as they played, you can't keep them ranked at number one, especially since Notre Dame is undefeated. You have to drop Miami. The question is, how far do you drop them? You have to drop a team for losing, but you can't drop them too much because they lost by one point to the number four ranked team in the country on the road. And Christ was working through his ballot and figuring out just how far to drop the Hurricanes. Somehow, through all of this, he forgot to list the Seminoles. Now I say this explanation is a bit confusing because there was no way in the world that Christ was going to drop Miami below Florida State. It just wouldn't make any logical sense. Miami and Florida State each had one loss, and when they played head-to-head, -head, it wasn't even close, as Miami won 31-0. They had the head-to-head -head and the significantly better and closer loss. So how did Florida State get forgotten in the shuffle? Florida State, for all intents and purposes, should have been irrelevant in all of this. It's almost like if I want to create a co-ed basketball team with five boys and five girls on the roster. I hold tryouts, and I really like how Samantha plays the point guard position. However, I'm debating on the final spot for the boys, and whether I want Chris or Matt to take the point guard spot, since it's a toss-up between the two. Somehow, while debating between Chris and Matt, I forget to include Samantha on my roster. How does that make any sense? Much like forgetting Samantha doesn't make any sense, as Samantha should have had no impact whatsoever on Chris or Matt, forgetting Florida State, since Miami would not have dropped below the Seminoles, doesn't seem to add up. The good news was that a man fessed up to his mistake, took accountability, and owned it, even if it never should have gotten to that point, and even if he double and triple checked his ballot and forgot to include them. The bad news? This changed nothing. Florida State was still ranked number 7, and they were livid about this. Even if Christ ranked the Seminoles at number 7, like he said in his apology that he would have if he filled out a proper ballot, Florida State still would have been ranked number 5 in the overall poll. Christ's omission cost them so many points in the poll that he was single-handedly responsible for causing them to drop two spots. In fact, FSU was so livid that they ordered a redo, to which the AP declined. AP Sports editor Daryl Christian said, Florida State people claimed it would cost them millions of dollars in bull revenue, and insisted we redo the poll. But we said no, because it was already out. It was an unfortunate mistake, and was an oversight by everyone. But when you pull the wrong lever in a voting booth, you don't get a second chance. Florida State was now ranked at number 7 instead of number 5, all because of a giant mistake. Fortunately, even if the mistake hurt Florida State in the short term, the mistake didn't seem to impact them too much in the long run. By the start of November, they were back up to number 5. They were at number 4 by the time bowl season started, and after defeating Auburn 13-7 in the Sugar Bowl, they finished the season at number 3 which gave them back-to-back -back seasons with a top three finish in the AP poll. Any damage that was done at the time was quickly forgotten about, because the impact that this mistake had in the long run was completely minimal, hence why it's somewhat of a forgotten story more than 30 years later, to the point where, at the time of this video getting published, if you type in Ron Christ Florida State on Google, nothing about this even comes up. But just imagine how damaging this could have been if it came at the end of the season, and made a significant impact on the bowl picture. It could have been really bad. So what's the moral of the story? When you're voting for anything, whether it's an election, or a poll like this one, or just a simple yes-no vote in a group chat, make sure you double-check what you do or do not put down. Because in 1988, because of this glaring omission, a writer in Pennsylvania was public enemy number one in Tallahassee. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.